just to double check, we can still see. Yep. Okay, perfect. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to talk about these two these two programs, the MSc in Biomedical Genomics and uh, the MSc in Genomics Data Science. Um, and really, they're they're designed to train people <coughs> for this for this area, uh, as I mentioned, uh, precision medicine. Uh, and it's really about kind of giving people both. I suppose the theoretical kind of uh, foundational skills in statistics and programming uh, and probability, uh, and then the applied skills and how to analyze this kind of genomic data uh, that can be pulled into these kind of precision medicine approaches. Um, so the two types of graduates that we target for the different programs uh, are, are a little bit different. If you're coming from a life science background with a degree in biochemistry, micro, uh, biotech or biomedical science, you would apply typically for the entry to the MSc in biomedical genomics. And if you're coming from a more quantitative background uh, with background in uh, skills in maths, stats, physics, uh, computer science or biomedical computational or electric, uh, electrical and electronic engineering, you would typically apply for the MSc uh, in genomics data science. Uh, and the reason that we would encourage people to apply for those different programs is that the while the programs share an awful lot of the same content, they they actually kind of diverge from from the same fundamental program. Um, there are some small differences that uh, with modules that have been tailored to to address gaps in specific backgrounds. Uh, so you'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the modules on the, on the next slide uh, and explain that a little further. Um, but generally, uh, if you're applying to these uh, programs, we expect uh, a first class or good second class honors degree in the, the one of the cognate uh, disciplines. Um, and the applicants are all individually assessed based on a combination of your transcripts, a CV and a personal statement. Uh, and for anyone who would be thinking of applying, I would say that the personal statement is really uh, an important aspect of the application that, that's that's not always done as well as as, as, as we, we would hope. Um, and really, the, the, the reason there's a focus on the personal statement is that if you're coming from a life science background and you're moving into this kind of interdisciplinary space, or if you're coming from a quantitative background and moving in to start applying these skills in, in a medical or biomedical domain, you really kind of have to sell us on what's the motivation for that. We have to get a good kind of sense that, you know, if you're applying for biomedical genomics, um, that you understand that this course isn't the same as, as something like uh, biomedical science or a master's in biotechnology, that it is really about being able to get hands on and analyze this kind of genomic data. So that's uh, that's kind of an important uh, an important point for, for for anyone who's thinking of applying. Uh, in terms of what you learn, um, we have what we would term core kind of uh, genomics data science skills. So the probability uh, models for genomics, statistical computing, uh, and programming, um, genomics research methods, data analysis, and medical genomics, including cancer genomics. So everyone will take uh, a combination of those. Uh, and then everyone has the option to take uh, three optional modules in semester two, and they would include things like data visualization, web and network science, bioinformatics and applied and advanced immunology. And again, the options that would be available would be a little bit different. Uh, if you're coming from the quantitative background, optimization is an option. Uh, if you're coming from a life science background, we'd ask that you take a, a foundational program in, in Python programming. So again, the options that are available are kind of tailored to the background on the two programs. But bar those small minor differences, uh, the class is taught as a single cohort. And that's a really important aspect because we have people from a life science background who are kind of learning the stats and the coding and people from a quantitative background who are learning about molecular biology and really the way that they 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 kind of lean on each other and learn from each other in this kind of peer learning group is is, is a really important aspect of the program. Um, so it also kind of serves to, to create a really nice kind of class dynamic. In terms of delivery, the program is a little bit different from your standard masters uh, in that we have what we would call an accelerated kind of six week uh, boot camp where we have these kind of workshop style uh, lectures. So what that means is rather than taking, we'll say, you know, a module in probability in week one and then seeing another one in week two, you actually would take a concentrated uh, week with an individual lecturer focusing on a particular topic. So you would you would generally see a week of statistics a week of probability, a week of data analysis, and then back to a week of statistics and so on. And, and the way, uh, the reason that we do that is, is that um, it's really important to get hands on time in front of the computer, uh, kind of doing these, learning these skills and applying them. And the way it works is that within an individual day, you would typically have a theoretical kind of lecture, and then you would have a computational exercise, a practical, then there would be a tutorial, and then there would be an assessment. So you have this kind of every day where you've got this kind of learn about something, practice something, get some feedback on what you've practiced, 
do an assessment and then a quick turnaround on feedback on that assessment as well. And we found that this really it's 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 a really intensive kind of process, uh, but it really helps students to upskill very, very quickly uh, in these different uh, kind of computational and quantitative skills that, that, that we want them to, to learn. Um, what we have then is uh, like the MSc in mathematics, we have an individual MSc project uh, and there's a few different components to this. So there's a 5000 word literature review that students complete in semester two. Um, we don't have a standard uh, kind of thesis submission. We, we actually moved away from a thesis submission to a manuscript submission. So we found that a lot of the projects that our students were working on were, were actually really high quality uh, and, and, and that by kind of posing them as this manuscript submission problem and, and having students submit in that format, um, that we actually ended up with students who by the end of the program were in a situation there with a little extra work and polish, uh, were, were in a place where they could actually feasibly submit a manuscript for publication, um, which is which is I think an excellent uh, kind of testament to both the quality of, of, of the work uh, that the students do and, and the way that we've kind of designed the, the, the projects. Uh, the third component then of the project is that you give a presentation to the external examiner. So similar to the so similar to the Masters in Mathematics, it's 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 a 90 credit course. So 60 come from the thought component and then the project itself is worth 30 credits. Uh, and you'll see here on the right uh, an example of one of our manuscripts from uh, this is actually from two years ago, where one of our students uh, actually traveled to the Sanger Institute uh, to work in collaboration uh, with a group there on, on single cell analysis. Um, unfortunately, this year because of COVID, we didn't have students do any placements, uh, but it is an option um, each year generally that we have places for one or two students on a competitive basis. So that's something to, to keep in mind as well. In terms of what students do afterwards, um, it, it's uh, it's quite an interesting program in that people come onto it uh, with, with, different, with different plans and the skills that they develop will let them kind of change career uh, quite effectively. So we do have life scientists who come onto the program and then basically choose to go back to a, a wet lab uh, environment, but with additional skills and data analysis, and that kind of increases their, their employability. Um, we do have uh, similarly life scientists who come onto the program and really excel in the data analysis skills and go on to do uh, more kind of uh, bioinformatics and data science uh, uh, to take on those roles. And, and typically we find people working in places like uh, Genomics Medicine Ireland or Genuity as it's been renamed, uh, Infra Labs, uh, Biomage, the European Bioinformatics Institute, or in data science roles in both pharma and non-life science companies. So we have people who work as data scientists in Abbott and Novartis, uh, and we also have people um, who've come from a life science background and actually used the quantitative training to, to, to flip careers. So we do have, uh, for example, one uh, a student who took the, the, the program two years ago who came from a life science background, but now works essentially in software uh, consulting and data, uh, data analysis. Um, so that's kind of where where a lot of our graduates would go. Uh, one in three of our graduates, though, do go on to PhD research. So we have graduates across all of the institutions in Ireland. We have graduates at a number of institutions across Europe, and we have graduates in doctoral training programs in the US. Um, I think three of our graduates are now working at the uh, ICANN School of Medicine in New York. Uh, one of the more interesting, I think, uh, recent developments for, for graduates here is the, the Centre for Research Training in Genomics Data Science. So this is a, a 13 million SFI funded uh, centre that's led by NUIG uh, that covers uh, five other institutions in Ireland. So it's a multi-institutional doctoral training programme. Uh, and we have a really good um, success ratio for, for our MSc students. So, uh, so far about eight uh, or nine of our MSc students uh, have secured places on the genomics data science PhD program are, and are currently in either their first or second year of the program. Uh, so that's that's certainly something to consider as well, because uh, essentially the, the the MSc program provides really solid background in the kind of skills that the that the CRT is, is looking for. Uh, lastly, just in terms of scholarships, um, there's a number of uh, different scholarships available. Some of these are directed for EU students. So there's the NUIG postgraduate scholarships for EU students, which uh, if you have a first class honours undergraduate degree, uh, it gets you uh, 1500 euro either in fee reduction or if you're on a SUSE grant um, is, is essentially uh, given to you. And for non-EU students, similarly, there's a 2000 euro uh, postgraduate merit scholarship. There's also a number of regional or country specific scholarships, and I'd encourage you to look at the international uh, students website for those. 
And lastly, there's a Government of Ireland scholarship, uh, which this year is an individual stipend of €10,000 and a full fee waiver. And there's 60 of those awards being given out this year across all of the different uh, Irish institutions. So uh, that's uh, essentially uh, my spiel for those two programmes. I'll pause or stop the recording now and uh, ask any questions uh, that people may have. <laughs>